Hi, this is Mato. Welcome to my online chess lecture. In this video I will show you a game between Rishi Sardana and Ye Liu. This is a game from the Australian Chess Championship 2024. This is a game from the round 6 played on the board 1. Rishi Sardana had white pieces and he started with e4. Ye Liu played e6. d4, d5, the French defense. e5, the advanced variation. c5, the standard move. c3, knight to c6. Knight to f3, queen to b6. A3 and now C4. Knight from B to D2. Knight to A5. Rook to B1. Bishop to D7. H4. Queen to C7. Bishop to E2. Knight to E7. Rishi Sardana cast at king's side. And Yi Liu castled queen's side. Knight to G5. Bishop to E8. B4. C takes on b3 and Passan, knight takes on b3, knight takes knight, queen takes knight, h6, kicking the knight back, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to e3, knight to a5, queen to a2, king to b8. After 18 moves have been played, it is about equal. Rook, from f to c1, bishop to c6, Knight to d2, queen to d7, a4, bishop to e7, g3, rook to c8, bishop to b5, rook to c7. It is white to move. And what follows now is trading many pieces and getting into an endgame. Let's take the last move by black back. If g5 is played, then h5. Back to our game, we have root to c7, and like I said, many pieces will be traded now. Bishop takes on c6, rook takes on c6, c4, knight takes on c4, knight takes on c4, d takes on c4, rook takes on c4, queen to d5, rook from b to c1, rook from h to c8, rook takes on c6, rook takes on c6, Queen takes on d5, rook takes on c1, check. Bishop takes rook, e takes on d5. So, we have reached an endgame with the same color bishops according to Fritz. Black is slightly better. f4. It is black to move and this is the critical moment. In this position, player with the black pieces played b5, a5 and king to c7 should have been considered. Back to our game, we have b5, sacrificing the pawn, a takes on b5, king to b7, f5, what white is intending is to push the pawn to f6 and then capture the pawn on h6 with the bishop creating a passed pawn on the h file. King to b6 was played, bishop to f8 should have been considered defending the pawn on h6. Back to our game, king to b6, f6, g takes on f6, and now bishop captured the pawn on h6, and white has a dangerous pass pawn on the h file. Now you can see why black should have played bishop to f8. The game continued. King takes on b5, and black is a pass pawn too. h5, a5, but now bishop to c1, a4, h6, bishop to f8, pawn takes pawn on f6. White is now much better. Black must give up the bishop. Bishop takes on h6, let's take it back. If a3, one line goes like this, h7, a2, bishop to b2, and black can resign, back to our game. So we have bishop takes on h6, bishop takes bishop, a3, bishop to c1, a2, bishop to b2, king to c4, g4, king to b3, bishop to a1, king to c2, g5, 
king to b1, bishop to c3, king to c2, bishop to a1. White can repeat the position after king to b1. Instead, we have g6 going for the win. King takes bishop, g takes on f7, king to b2, pawn to f8, queen, pawn to a1, queen check, king to g2, queen to d1, white to move. According to Grandmaster Ian Rogers, in end games like this, white queen should be placed in the center of the board or close to it. So, this is how player with the white pieces achieved that. Queen to b8 check, king to c2, queen to f4. Black resigned. Black has only one sensible check in this position, but after that check, there is a block on f2, trading queens. After the trade, the f pawn is marching to f8 square. And this was a nicely played endgame by Rishi Sadana. What do you think of this game? And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess and bye for now.